2024 Indian Super Chief Limited Review Bridging the Gap Between Cruisers and Baggers There are countless reasons to ride a motorcycle, and American riders span a wide demographic. However, the statistics show a clear preference. Most American motorcyclists favor cruisers, particularly American-made V-twin engines. The appeal may lie in the image, lifestyle, culture, or nostalgia, and Indian Super Chief Limited aims to fulfill all these desires and more. The Super Chief Limited bridges the gap between cruiser and bagger categories within Indian motorcycles lineup. It masterfully blends the simplicity of older baggers with modern amenities, catering to the needs of 2024 riders. For those who find modern baggers like the Chieftain and Challenger too feature-rich and expensive, and stripped-down cruisers like the Scout and Classic Chief models too minimal, the Super Chief Limited offers a perfect middle ground. Indian Super Chief Limited Ergonomics and Style At first glance, the Super Chief Limited embodies the classic cruiser. It features a big round headlight, gleaming chrome V-twin motor, teardrop gas tank, and a powerful stance accentuated by the 13090 front tire. With a seat height of 26.2 inches, it's easy to mount, though the large Thunderstroke 116 engine and floorboards make the U-turn radius a bit wide. Despite this, a petite rider like me, at 5 foot 4, can easily flat foot the bike. Lifting it from the side stand requires some effort, and maneuvering its 739 pounds demands a bit of muscle. The riding position is accommodating with long floorboards positioned mid to front forward and handlebars that sweep back for a comfortable elbow bend. As a shorter rider, I found the foot controls slightly out of reach, requiring me to adjust my position and stretch to engage them. The levers are non-adjustable, and the clutch lever, in particular, is quite stiff. Indian Super Chief Limited Engine The Super Chief Limited earns its super designation from the 1,890 cubic centimeters air-cooled V-twin Thunderstroke 116 engine, a significant upgrade from the Thunderstroke 111 in the base model Super Chief. Apart from the star-spangled banner, few sounds are as distinctly American as an air-cooled V-twin engine roaring to life. Even with the stock exhaust, the Super Chief Limited's engine impresses, with the hand grips vibrating in sync with the throbbing heart of this classic cruiser. The Thunderstroke 116 offers plenty of low-end torque and cruises comfortably around 3,000 RPM, with a manageable buzz felt in the handlebars and seat. However, this old-school motor boasts some modern features, including three selectable ride modes, rain, road, and sport. The primary difference between these modes is the throttle response, which ranges from softest in rain mode to hardest in sport mode. The sport mode, in particular, delivers a surprisingly aggressive throttle response, causing the rear tire to screech when accelerating from a stoplight and providing a thrilling, though intense, riding experience. Ultimately, I found the road mode to be the most comfortable, offering ample power with a more controlled throttle response. Indian Super Chief Limited Chassis and Handling Traditional cruisers tend to like going in straight lines or rumbling along gentle long sweepers, and the SEL is no exception. A steel tubular frame, 46mm telescopic fork with 5.2 inches of travel, and dual rear shocks with adjustable preload and 3 inches of travel are standard fare in the cruiser world. Stopping power is delivered by a single 300mm semi-floating rotor and 4-piston caliper up front, with a single 300mm floating rotor and 2-piston caliper out the rear, both of which are ABS-equipped. The overall sensation from the SCL is stiffness. Nearly every bump on the street transmitted straight to the seat of the pants, and with forward-oriented floorboards it was difficult to stand up to help aid the short travel suspension in its mission. The fork was immovable and it's difficult to imagine the amount of force and stress required to send it through its stroke. It's likely that Indian has dialed up the suspension settings due to the overall weight of the machine in the anticipation of a much larger pilot in the seat, rather than all 120 pounds of little old me. The brakes require some strategy to operate them in the most effective manner. Relying entirely on the front brake is a no-no, as the single disc setup is not fully adequate to quickly slow down all the weight of this rolling thunder machine. A thoughtful combination of front brake, generous rear brake, and timed engine braking are all required to stop the SCL with haste. 
In practicing some emergency stops, I found the ABS and the rear brake to activate much sooner than the front, and generally speaking the overall stopping power of the SCL left me wanting. A dual-disc front brake would be a welcome upgrade in future models. On twisty and winding roads the SCL has some limitations. First on turn in, the wide-profile 130mm front tire is resistant to direction change. When it does finally commit to the corner, the SCL has a tendency to run wide. Increasing counter-steering is a natural instinct to help remedy this issue, but the floorboards will scrape with minimal effort on that front. Not to mention that the floorboards instead of foot pegs means the rider has even less agency to use body weight to control the motorcycle. Just like Goldilocks, the Super Chief Limited has a preferred moderate riding goal in mind. It's called a cruiser for good reason. Tight, technical roads and lane splitting is anxiety-inducing but casual cruising on serene back roads and empty highways are where the SCL performs its best. Indian Super Chief Limited. Everything else. The Super Chief Limited gets top marks for tastefully integrating technology into classic packaging. In particular, the round dial instrument, which is a 4-inch touchscreen powered by Indian's Ride Command user interface, is intuitive and works quite well. Toggling through multiple touch displays, GPS navigation, Bluetooth connectivity, and music control finds no issues. This instrument has other features I did not get to engage with, such as live weather overlay, live traffic overlay, bike locator, and intuitive destination search. It's an impressive amount of functionality in a small and discreet dial. The SCL also had hard bags that mimicked the look and feel of soft leather saddlebags, complete with fast buckles and shaped to the exhaust. The keyless ignition aspect of the SCL is also slick, but not exactly new technology. However, something about a push-start air-cooled V-twin does tickle my fancy. The Super Chief Limited fills in a niche that is becoming smaller and smaller, much like trying to find a small-body pickup truck in a sea of new-age monster trucks. The marketplace has forced manufacturers to supersize and overcomplicate many product lines, and price them into extremes to make profitable margins. For the rider who wants a simple bagger from yesteryear, yet still have those one or two goodies like cruise control and a fancy dash, the SCL is an unsung hero in meeting the need and bucking the trend of more, more, more. Put simply, the Super Chief Limited is a refreshingly honest motorcycle. It is not trying to redefine a genre, or smash any figures or records. Load up the tailbags, cue the riding music, and see where the road will lead. It's uncomplicated, just like cruising was meant to be. Thanks for watching. Drop a like. Leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.